Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good, this one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket and I'm not gonna pay for it. Who says you're not gonna pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Jacob Luca is suing Daisy Levine in the amount of $300. Mr. Luca claims Ms. Levine hired him to play Santa for a holiday event, but says she refused to pay him after his beard came loose and fell off. The matter of Jacob Luca versus Daisy Levine, you're suing for $300, uh, the fee that she owed you for playing Santa at a holiday party. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. So what happened, Santa? Why you didn't get your money? I'm suing Ms. Levine for a breach of contract. See, a couple of weeks before the event, the person who she regularly hires to play Santa Claus ended up having to cancel. So she ended up contacting me. I was going to play Santa Claus, and the agreement is that I would play their role for three hours and that I would not break character, which I did not. Now, in the event, I wore the suit. I came in early, and... Ms. Levine was kind enough to allow me to have something to eat beforehand. So I ate, and then afterwards I went in the back and I changed into the Santa Claus outfit. Afterwards, I went out and I took pictures with kids and gave them gifts that were provided by Ms. Levine. So uh, this was a child's holiday party? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, about a half hour into the event, my costume became a bit on the sweaty side. And the adhesive on my beard started to become loose, and one child was rather curious, so he started tugging on my beard which resulted in it coming off. Staying in character, I said, Ho! Oh, Santa's getting so old, his hair is starting to fall out. Ho, ho, ho! Well, unfortunately, the... That's a pretty good comeback. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering how you responded to that. All right. Now, unfortunately, of course, the child was still upset, despite my impression. So then he started crying? He started, and what did he say? He pointed at me and said, He's not Santa! He's not Santa! And several other children saw this, and they began crying and saying the same thing and okay so what happened after that after that the party lasted a little while longer but at some point the parents just took their kids home attempting to calm them down so the party ended in less than three hours yes ma'am all right so now she's saying miss levine you're saying he shouldn't get his three hundred dollars that's right, Your Honor. That he breached the contract. That's right. Okay, so tell me your part. I run this holiday fundraiser every year, as I have in the years past. It's a wonderful community event where we raise money for families who don't so have So how's money it a fundraiser? Well, we have a lot of different uh, vendors who donate food and items for purchase. And there's also a very large uh, silent auction that's held, usually at the end of the fundraiser, where some of our highest bidders end up donating a lot of money to help these families in our community. And it's, it's a very important fundraiser, and in years past, it's raised a lot of money. So people have to pay to come to this event? Is That's it a right. paid ticket? That's right. There's a, a small ticket fee, and then once they're there, they also uh, are given the opportunity to donate more through different items. and, and To and donate purchases. more by purchasing items at the auction? That's right. And, and from the vendors? And from the vendors who have donated their, their uh, services and their time as well, and their, their products. But, but all during the event... The three hours, the children are allowed to take pictures with Santa, right? That's right, Your Honor. And Santa's over somewhere else. That's right. He's... In a little booth somewhere where you can take pictures, right? Correct. So what happened? Well, Your Honor, uh, you know, I had gotten, like Mr. Lucas said, a contact for him a couple of weeks prior to the event after my original Santa had canceled. And even though he told me he has never played Santa before, I was desperate. All the other Santas were already booked. It's a very busy season, uh, as you know. And so I went with it. He sounded like a great guy. He but he had played me. character roles before, he That's said. That's right. He assured me he could play solid characters. And the, the contract stated specifically that he would not break character during the event. I'm sure you can understand that that's very important. Who purchased the Santa suit, you or him? We provide the Santa suit, Your Honor. It's the same suit we do use each year for our event. Your regular Santa, who has been doing this for you, has been, had done it for how many years? Oh, I've been running this event for six years, and it, it's been the same Santa for the past five before that. He was our sixth. Okay, the, um, tell me the differences in the height and, and size of the other Santa versus him. 
Well, Your Honor, the Santa suit is one size fits most, as most Santa suits are. And uh, this gentleman, Mr. Luca, had about a similar height to my previous Santa. And though he was a bit younger um, and more slender, I... Who's more slender? Mr. Luca is more slender. Uh, he was advised to, you know, beef up the costume a little bit to add some stuffing, make it more authentic. And he assured me that that was something he was prepared to do. Who put the adhesive on? Who put the beard on him? I was just going to mention that. He honestly insisted that he use adhesive because the beard that we typically uh, use has a strap that you wear around the back of your head. And Mr. Luca, um, he takes his characters very seriously. He told me that the strap was inauthentic and that he would prefer to glue it to his face. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. That when children are made to believe or find out or discover that you're not Santa. It really upsets them. I don't know why, but it's like, oh, that's not Santa. And they just go crazy. And later. Why was the other young lady at the house, the second one? For schoolwork. The first one was for schoolwork. The second one was she was having issues. But Mr. Woods didn't know anything about him, did he? No. And then you cheated on him yet with somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Justice with Judge Maybelline. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Jacob Luca, who is suing Daisy Levine for breach of contract. So where's the Santa suit? Uh, I do have it with me, Your Honor. I wasn't sure if I should bring it in or not. It's just right outside. We have it outside. Will, uh, Will would you here. go get it for me, please? Okay, so let me see what Santa was wearing. Where did you use adhesive? I don't see a place to use adhesive. On right your there, face? About in the, yes, the chin area. Okay. And to me, that's always a risk factor. Go on. So, Your Honor, I, I walk in and uh, I hear some children crying and I go in to check and see what the chaos is about. Um, I'm very busy at this event, but I, I, of course, need to go figure out what's going on with Mr. Luca. Um, and it's then when I walked in and I saw him and not only was the beard off of his face, he's holding it in his hands and he's sort of taunting and joking and playing with the kids about it and the children are crying and it's, you know, it's a chain reaction. One child and the next and the next and I, I didn't know what to do at that point. Um, uh, parents were starting to hear it as Nobody well. Nobody had enough sense to say Santa gotta go to the bathroom or something? To Santa to go out, step out a second? Yes. Readjust? He was given that never occurred time. to anybody? Yes, he was given the time to readjust. Oh, uh, but, but after I, how long? You know, Your Honor, it was a lot going on at the time. I, I had taken some of the families out to help console their children and hopefully, um, you know, put out some of these okay, fires. So let me ask him. So after the child snatched and the beard came off, how long did it take you before you had the consciousness to say, oh, I should go readjust? About a minute. And you had never played Santa before? No, ma'am. So why did you choose to not wear the strap if you'd never done it before? And her Santa had done it for years and had always worn the strap. I felt the Wouldn't strap... Wouldn't she know what's best if she's, her Santa has done it several times? I felt the strap was inauthentic. And I wanted the beard to feel real. Plus the fact, if someone is wearing... You wanted it to feel real on who, you? Yes, ma'am. And if a child were to tug at it, I believe that having adhesive was going to reduce the chances of it pulling forward as adhesive strap plus the plus the strap would reduce the chances, but without the strap you increase the chances. With the adhesive, I figured I thought that's that what that you figured. Do. Yes, ma'am. Well, see, that's why you have to stop. Sometimes you don't need to figure. You, you're talking about, if you told me that with experience, I had done it like this on several occasions, and that's the way I wear it on my face, and it stays that way, but she had done this for six years. She had used this same costume for six years, and you should have been aware, too, that a child is going to tug. So one of the parts, ways you play Santa is you have to make sure the children's hands stay away from your beard. They can only just kind of stroke it, you know? You gotta pay attention. You hadn't played Santa before. I hadn't, no. This was my first time, although I've played other roles in the past which did involve adhesive on my face and different makeup. Well, but it doesn't have the same results. It has, this has the results that when children are made to believe or find out or discover that you're not Santa, 
It really upsets them. I don't know why, but it's like, oh, that's not Santa. And they just go crazy. Of course, and it's not my wish to upset children. Mm -hmm. I stayed in character the entire time to try to help them calm down and to complete the task that I was assigned to do. Yeah, I, I got it. Now, Miss um, Levine, by the same token, he didn't lose character and he couldn't control that the child pulled his beard such that it came off. Unfortunately, it was a mistake. It was an accident that the child pulled it. And when you breach a contract, it has to be something of your own free will that you do. I don't know what you're about to show me. What? Well, in the contract, it does say that he's going to remain in character for the duration of the And three I just hours. told you, he didn't go out of character. He went to try to readjust and to come back and continue the party. He couldn't control that people were not willing because at this point, they know that there is not a Santa. And that it's always that risk. You've been doing this for six years. And, and you know little children, if they find out that may be what happened, and that's how they're going to respond. But it wasn't his fault. Well, yes, but had he been wearing the strap, like you mentioned, you it could know. have been recovered. That's what happens at, with every Santa at some point. It doesn't come completely off, but it's not his fault. Yes, Your Honor. And in doing so, this caused us to lose a lot of money for the fundraiser I got because it. everybody I left got before it, the for auction. For a breach of contract, he has to be the person who did something wrong and negligently. And I'm just telling you that he used adhesive and he didn't use enough. Okay, but it's something, it happens. And he, I'm going to give him some culpability, but not all. So I think you still have to pay him, and I'm gonna ask you to pay him at least $150 of his fee. That's the judgment for the plaintiff. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $150. The fact is, I did do my job. I did stay in character, and I do deserve to be paid. Well, next time you decide to play Santa, secure the beard. Coming up. So why you put him out? He was supposed to adhere to the rules of the house, and he broke those. And what rules did he break? James uh, told me that he was sick, and he was going to stay home in this school. So I happened to come home early that day from work, and there was a young lady in my living room. Justice with Judge Maybelline. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Pamela Woods is suing James Charney in the amount of $740.32. Ms. Woods claims she let her son's boyfriend stay in her home as long as he followed the rules, but says Mr. Charney didn't hold up his end of the bargain. In the matter of Pamela Woods versus James Charney, you're suing him for $740.32. You're saying that he freeloaded off of you and he was supposed to pay rent and do some chores, but he didn't complete the chores, so what happened? Basically, you, you've, you've summed it up. He was to stay at my home for three months um, under the condition that he completed certain tasks around the house as well as landscaping. How long did he stay with you? Two months and 20 days. Why did you offer him to stay with you in exchange for these items? First of all, I've known James for a couple of years. He's been dating my son um, for two years, a little over two years. So why you put him out? He was supposed to adhere to the rules of the house, and he broke those. And what rules did he break? James uh, told me that he was sick, and he was going to stay home in this school. So I happened to come home early that day from work, and there was a young lady in my living room. Okay. So I pulled James aside, and I told him that, you know, I would prefer that he let me know if he was going to have guests over. A few weeks later, it happened again. He had another girl at, the, at my home, and at that point, I had to pull him aside again, and I said, look, you know, we already discussed this. I told you that if someone's coming to my home, I would appreciate you letting me know first. Stop giving me that cockamamie boo. <laughs> the man is out of your house because he and your son broke up. Let's just tell the truth. I am telling the truth. He broke up, but he also, you know, broke a lot of rules within my household. Come up, Mr. Woods. Tell the truth. James and I met in school. Mm -hmm. We fell in love, and he was someone I thought I could trust. You asked your mom to let him move in with you? I asked her if it would be OK, and she made a contract with agreements that they put together, and uh, he had to abide by. Right. Who told him to leave? Uh, I never told him to leave. Really? No. Have a seat, Mr. Woods. Let me go over here. 
So you didn't know the rule. Now she told you the rule the first time around, right? Yes, ma'am. Second time you bring somebody over there, did you ask her in advance? No, I did not. And you had another person there? I did. So you broke a rule? Yes. So she's not lying? No. Okay. Coming up. When you're sitting up with the other girl, why was she at the house? Huh? Huh? Why was the other young lady at the house, the second one? Uh... Closed captioning provided by... You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Pamela Woods, who is suing James Charney for $740.32. So when were you asked to leave? I was asked to leave when I cheated on Minna. Cheated on Mr. Woods? Mr. Woods. And he found out about it? Yes, ma'am. When did he find out about it? When I told him. And when, when did you tell him? As soon as it happened. Why? Because I felt guilty. Okay, and when you told him that, he told you to get out of my house? Along those lines. Yeah, probably wasn't as nice. It was not. Okay. And was either those young ladies that you had over to the house, were they the persons you cheated with or somebody else? No, somebody okay. else. So you had this conversation with him about I cheated. How did you, I mean, just out the sky? I mean, you just said, oh. No, I mean, it wasn't out of the sky. He felt like something was wrong. Mm -hmm. I broke a rule. I started acting weird. He started acting weird. Started tension between us. Mm -hmm. And eventually I was getting fed up because I was doing housework and I was doing what she wanted me to do along with everything else. And You weren't doing what she wanted you to do. I was, but I mean, I stopped because I got kicked out. Two months and 20 days and you only had three months. So you only had 10 more days. So you weren't going to complete all that. Why'd you stop doing it? I got when you're sitting up with the other girl, kicked. why was she at the house? Huh? Huh? Why was the other young lady at the house, the second one? Uh, for schoolwork. The first one was for schoolwork. The second one was he was having issues. But Mr. Mr. Woods didn't know anything about him, did he? No. Mm. And then you told him you had an affair and cheated on him yet with somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Judge Maybelline's verdict when Justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. How much is your rent total for the house? I normally rent my, my guest room out for $450 a month. Basically the $740 is in lieu of what I would have been able to recoup had, I, had the room been available to rent. Two months is nine hundred dollars. Twenty days no, of that. He was scheduled to to live with us for three months, so that's close to thirteen hundred dollars. Right, but he had lived there for only two months, so that's nine hundred. Two months and twenty days, almost three months. I got it, but two months at four fifty is nine hundred. Is that right or wrong? That's right. But I'm trying to see how you got to seven forty thirty two. I was about to give you more, but you talk oh. too much. <laughs> Excuse me, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I, no, you go I get your seven hundred forty dollars and thirty two cents judgment for the plaintiff. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $740.32. James, I'm really sorry I had to bring you to court, but you didn't do what you said you were going to do, and I just want my money. Well, uh, I appreciate you taking me in, and uh, you'll get your money. Okay. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.